In the history of Polish-Lithuanian democracy, each successive monarch, in order to maintain the state and win wars, gave ever greater privileges to the nobility. In Polish, the Szlachta. In time, the Szlachta simply took over. From 1430, a member of the Szlachta could not be imprisoned without a court judgment. England's similar, but much more famous, Habeas Corpus Act of 1679 came nearly 250 years later. King Kazimierz Jagiellonczyk contributed to the expansion of the gentry's privileges. As the king needed the support of the gentry in the war against the Teutonic Knights, he agreed in 1454 to the Statutes of Nishava, which elevated the power of the gentry in governing the Polish-Lithuanian state. In 1505, the Nihil Novi Act was passed. It stipulated that the law is established by the consensus of the king and two ruling estates. It is this event that officially ushered in the Schlachter democracy. Noblemen in Europe viewed themselves as subjects of the king. However, in Poland, the highborn saw their allegiance as being not to the king, but to the country, and more precisely, to the republic. The king in Poland was a lifetime president chosen in general Szlachta elections. The monarch convened the parliament, the same in Polish, contributed to making laws, and gave out lucrative positions. Poles had elected their king since the end of the 14th century, when Jagiełło, the ruler of Lithuania, was proclaimed king. Afterwards, the choice of successors to the throne from his lineage were confirmed, all the way until the heirless death of Zygmunt August, who reigned between 1548 and 1572. Theoretically, an average Polish nobleman could become the king. It happened four times that representatives of families which advanced to the aristocracy sat on the Polish-Lithuanian throne. This was the result of either backstage lobbying or the personal fame of the nobleman, Szlachcic in Polish. The latter was the case with the great leader Jan Zobieski III. If the Schlachter thought that the king had exceeded his powers, then it formed a confederation against him, something called a rokosz in Polish. Indeed, the Schlachter could rise in arms against the monarch, and that did happen several times. From 1573, the Schlachter gathered in the fields outside Warsaw to elect a king. Every nobleman, Schlachcic in Polish, could take part in the voting, regardless of his financial status. When we bear in mind that the Szlachta represented up to 10% of the population, this means there were more people entitled to vote in 16th century Poland than in France all the way to the first half of the 19th century. The deputies to the same were picked by local parliaments, known to this day in Poland as Sejmiki. Such a deputy was bound by instructions from his constituency, and woe to him if he let his voters down. Attention! In the Sejmiki, it was not only possible to lose one's vote, but also one's life, because duels often occurred. About the Liberum Veto which empowered a single deputy to block the decisions of the entire same. To this day, it is talked about with embarrassment, but in bygone days, Poles adhered to the principle of achieving full consensus. Persuasion went on until accord at least reigned. Because of the constant obstruction waged against the Rzeczpospolita by the neighboring countries in the 18th century, Eventually, the majoritarian voting system was introduced by the Constitution of May 3, 1791, the first constitution in Europe. The king was again to be a hereditary ruler, the royal elections were abolished, and a modern government dubbed the Guardians of the Laws was created. 
The constitution of May 3rd did not, however, come into effect due to Russia's and Prussia's intervention. The Zhezh Pospolita disappeared from the map at the end of the 18th century, at the very moment when the ruling state was trying to reform the political system. However, the seed of the Zlachta democracy sprouted across the ocean. The founding fathers of the United States of America, when writing their constitution in 1787, were inspired by the Henrician Articles, which set limits on the rights and competencies of both subjects and the king. Thus, the statecraft solutions of the Noblemen's Republic gave rise to modern democracy, 